Hello and welcome to another tutorial on how to create an assignment for your students, what it looks like for both you and the student. And in this particular assignment, or excuse me, in this particular video, I'm going to show you if you have created a template and you're going to push that template out to your students. So in our previous video, we looked at open-ended assignments where the kid actually had choices of creating a doc, a slide, or whatever. Here I'm going to speak to the idea of, of you want it to come back in a specific format. Um, I'm going to take you into my drive momentarily and just show you um, what's happening here in the background. In the background in uh, Google, Google has actually created a um, folder for me called Classroom and it's tucking all of my classroom materials into this particular folder. So I'm in the sample class uh, 2017. I'm going to double click on that. Now notice here from a teaching standpoint, I have all of my folders set up per question, which makes it very, very easy to go ahead and take a look. More importantly, super cool, is that if I click on my folder, let me go back here on my, once again, here's my classroom. Here um, is the folder for this particular class. And now that um, I've got this laid out here, excuse me, now that Google's laid that out for me, I can double click and go into this folder. And as the student submits it, their name is automatically attached to each assignment. So if I need to go back and take a look at what they submitted on this particular assignment, I don't have to worry about them naming it. I don't have to worry about me naming it. It's already there. Super cool. So one of the other things I do uh, from an organizational standpoint here, I'll just show you. This is my... Uh, primary uh, workspace, so I've got a lot of stuff going on here, but I've got this folder called Classroom, which I just showed you, but I've made another folder called Classroom Support, and within this Classroom Support area, I have all of my extra pieces in terms of my teaching samples, in terms of my templates, in terms of the forms that I'm going to create. I like to keep things nice and organized in terms of putting them all into a separate folder, and um, I do number them accordingly. That way, again, from a standpoint of assigning them later on, they're all right there. Um, all right, so now I'm going to um, pop back in here. And actually, I apologize. I was babbling for a moment. Let me just go back. If I go back to Drive, um, I'm going to show you under my classroom support area. I've got a template for a question that I would ask my students. So I've named it accordingly, and then I'm going to give the directions or whatever. And truthfully, it could even be as simple as just, you know, name colon, and then the student has to fill in their name. You might provide short answer directions here, whatever. In this particular case, I've got some questions that I want them to answer. And of course, this is in a Google Doc right? So this is my template that I'm going to send out to them. That way, when they do the assignment, they're going to have to answer the question in a Google Doc, as opposed to the open-ended questions where they had the opportunity to uh, submit the answer in any uh, format. Now, to create that assignment, I'm going to click, I'm going to hover on the plus, I'm going to go to create assignment, I'm going to name this 1.4, and I'm going to say um, Tempest, because quite frankly, I forget what I named it. Um, now, what I'm going to do is this. Because I've got a template already ready to go, I'm going to now start exploring these kinds of things down here. I don't want to do that as an attachment because if I'm basically sending a copy to the kid. I want to open or attach this as a drive piece. And uh, Google is kind in terms of giving me my most recent or alternately I could go to my drive and navigate through my folders. I'm going to go ahead and take the easy route and do recent. And here's the recent piece that I just was working on. And I'm going to click on add. Now notice that once I've added this particular assignment, and this is the, the template, I can come over here and notice here I've got this students can view file. If I click on the drop down, I can choose that the students can edit the file. And that's where everybody's editing your file. If that's what you want, if you set up a collaborative workspace where everybody can edit, that's fine. Um, but traditionally, what I tend to do is I tend to do this last choice where it says make a copy for each student. So what this does for me is I don't have to make 25, 30, 150 copies of this template and push it out to kids. 
Simply by clicking on the drop down and choosing make a copy for each student, I can now click on assign. And um, here's the assignment piece here. Now as a student, I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to bring up my student screen. I'm going to have to refresh. And here is my assignment and I can click on open. Once I click on the assignment, my teacher has already given me the template. And let me just take you back and be very clear on this, right? Let me back out of this, right? Um, let me take you into another question where I didn't provide anything. So I'm going to pretend I didn't do that. All right, so here I am at a a uh, question where I haven't really started it, ignore the returns piece. Note that I can add or I can create, right? I don't have any template or I don't have any sample here to, to edit here. However, in this last one under the Tempest, I do have a teacher provided template here. So I would tell the kids, please do not add or create something new. Please use the template. I can click on that and um, I'm going to do hot dogs as my favorite. I'd rather lose junk food, whatever, okay? Again, I'm not going to get into looking at these silly questions, but now I can edit these as much as I want. Maybe I have a couple days to do this assignment, so I'm going to come back in here later on and go ahead and do that. Um, but for my part, I'm going to now pretend that I'm logged back in. I'm now the student, and I haven't quite submitted. I can either click here or click here on open. And here is my content and uh, I can double check my work if I want to, but I'm pretty sure I am done. So now I'm going to simply click on turn in. And once again, um, it's sending it back over to my teacher. I click on turning in and uh, I am done for the moment. Um, once again, I'm going to come back over here as a teacher. I'm going to uh, refresh my screen. Oops, it actually just refreshed for me. Here it comes back. Now I can see that one is done. And once again, here's Albert's work. Um, but uh, what's really cool about all of this, of course, is that I can open the folder for the assignment. And now again, within my Google Drive, all of my stuff is organized. So if you remember before, when I had this folder open, I didn't have a folder called Tempest. Um, but because I've made that assignment, now Google has opened that for me. And if you remember, when we were back as the student, excuse me, when we were back pushing this out to the student, I did not create multiple copies of this template for my students, but rather I assigned it in terms of them each getting a copy. And what that means for me is as it gets turned in, Google automatically adds their name up across the top of their file so that if I were to take a look at this file that Albert submitted to me, it automatically appends or adds his name at the top. So you don't have to worry about managing that portion of it. I'm going to uh, end this particular tutorial right now and uh, hope to see you in the next one in which I'm going to show you how to issue out a form and how kids can turn that in. See you in a moment.